I'm Hillary and this is part four in our series on building a wood framed raised bed garden. In this video we build the beds. So we go over some construction details that we think are really important and give your beds a little extra finesse as well as actually taking you step by step through the building process. So this is what we're going to be building today. It's a four by eight foot raised garden bed. So let's talk about some of the details of your raised bed. This bed has three tiers of lumber. You can build a raised bed as tall or as shallow as you want. Part of its functionality is just to be a frame in the garden to hold the soil in. Part of its aesthetic. The taller you make it, the more materials you're going to need, but the more high quality soil you can bring in. Also, people often find it more comfortable just to work at a height a little bit off the ground. So we like to use two by six lumber, that's what these are, and build them three high. Because lumber is always a little bit shy of the dimension that it's named, so a two by six is actually one and a half inches by five and a half inches, the total height of this is 16 and a half inches off the ground. When we're building raised beds, we like to do what are called alternating butt joints. So in finished carpentry, often people will do a mitered edge, which means you cut a 45 degree angle on each piece. And that looks really nice, but what we found is that in outdoor applications, it usually opens up and splits over time. So the longest lasting nice edge you can get is by using what are called butt joints, which are just butting up against each other and flat. We think it looks a lot better when you alternate like this. And so alternating butt joint means one board goes short, the next board goes long, and then the third one goes short again. So you can see how we've screwed the bed together. We have three screws in the bottom boards, only two in the top because the corner post is cut a little bit short. We wanted these to be spaced evenly and be in a straight line. So you can see how we've screwed this bed together in a straight line. Each of these screws is spaced evenly on the boards. So the first screw is up one inch. The next screw is at two and three quarters. And the third screw is at four and a half inches. This allows us to space them and have them come up like this. The top board only has two screws in it, the first two at one inch and two and three quarters. So because you're doing alternating butt joints, those insets are different for the long edges and the short edges. We recommend using three inch star head exterior screws. Exterior screws are meant to be used outside and the star heads are less likely to strip than other types. So they'll be a little easier to work with. So you'll see we're using four by fours for our corner posts. And that's because we want something really sturdy and durable that's gonna hold up. This is the part of the bed that's most likely to give way. So sometimes you'll see people have built beds where they've just screwed two boards together or have a really small piece in the corner. And that's the part that always fails. So we use a really bulky piece of wood here to make sure that the corners don't fall apart. Like the two by sixes, this is actually three and a half inches by three and a half inches, um, which is why those measurements I showed you on the outside will line up in the center of the four by four post. We cut them a little bit short at 15 and a half inches, just so aesthetically this can get buried with soil and you don't see it. This could easily come up to the top of the bed if you'd prefer to do that. So this is our cross brace, another piece that people often skip over when building a bed, but it's really important. It helps basically keep the bed from bowing out. The soil is really heavy when it's inside your bed and it puts a lot of pressure on these long sides. So we have a vertical piece on each side and that helps put these in a straight plane Otherwise, you'll see your boards are sort of like this and they're not all aligned. So if you put in a vertical piece, it ties all those together. And then this actually holds the bed from bowing out this horizontal piece right here. When you're picking out lumber for your raised beds, I would really recommend buying some extra boards. This way, if any of them are not in good condition, you don't have to use them. And also, if you make a mistake when you're cutting, you have backup pieces. This piece has some problems and we're not going to use it in our raised beds. Um, you can see right here, right near the center, there's a huge notch out of it. So if we cut through this, both of the short ends would be kind of messed up at the, at the ends where we've cut it. And it could also just fracture there. Other things to look for in wood are kind of basically 
misshapen pieces. So sometimes a board will be bowed like this, and that's a problem. If you have a bowed board, but you need to use it, it's good to use that for your short ends instead of your long ends, because if you cut it in the middle of the bow, you can often get it to line up without having as much of a problem. It's one of the reasons you want to sort out your long pieces and your short pieces before you start cutting to make sure you use all the best pieces for your long ends of the bed. A piece of wood also might go like this, and this is called cupping when it bows in this direction. Also something to look for that just makes putting the bed together more difficult. You'll see that this board is also really just roughed up in a lot of places. So one other thing to consider when you're sorting your wood is which side is going to be your outside and which side is going to be your inside. You might want to make the most beaten up sides face in so that when you're looking at your bed in the garden, it looks nice and you don't have all those markings on it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is this, which is sort of an edge on the board like this, which is called waning. Not a big issue, but also something if you want to just make sure you have these waned edge faces faced in. And if possible, don't use them for the top of the bed. If these wanes are on your board, but it's on the bottom piece, you won't ever notice it. When it comes to wood, you want something that won't rot too quickly, but won't leach anything nasty into your soil. We don't use pressure treated lumber for garden beds. Treated lumber is designed to resist rotting when exposed to moist soil. And the treatments used today are not as toxic as they used to be but treated wood still has the potential to leak chemicals into your garden bed. It's actually prohibited for farms producing certified organic crops, so we steer clear of it. The good news is that there are woods that are naturally rot resistant. Some examples are cedar, redwood, and cypress. Naturally rot resistant woods are usually more expensive, but they last longer in the garden. There are also common types of building lumber that aren't naturally rot resistant, so they won't last quite as long, but they'll be quite a bit less expensive. Some examples of this type of wood are pine and fir. Choose whatever type of wood is available in your area and suits your budget and garden goals. Once you've sourced your lumber, you'll need to make some cuts. These are all the pieces that you need for one four by eight by 16 and a half inch wood framed raised bed. So I'm applying what's called an internal wood stabilizer. It's kind of like a stain, but the idea is it soaks right into the wood and prevents water from getting in and rotting it. So we're going to put two coats of this on and that should help seal up the boards and make them last a lot longer. It's best to do it before you put it together because if you assemble the bed and then add the wood stabilizer, there's parts of the bed you're not getting to. The water can still penetrate where they're all lined up and stacked on top of each other. All right, we're almost ready to start assembling. First, we're going to pre-mark where all the screw holes are going to go. You're going to see how this is assembled on the ground. It'll be easier to visualize. But on one end of the board, we're going to mark screw holes at one and three quarters inches off the end. At the other end, we're going to mark those screw holes at three and one quarter inches off the end. And that way, when it goes together, all the screw lines are going to be exactly in the middle of the 4x4 four four corner post. When constructing your beds, take a little extra time and care in getting the first run of boards secured to your corner posts. After that, the rest of the project will go together super quickly.
All right, we've got two raised beds. This took the two of us probably about an hour to put together. Now we'll get them in the garden.